Sweet. So welcome back to another episode of Shop Shenanigans. So uh, today we'll be working on the truck. Nothing too crazy been going on, just a uh, little uh, speedometer issues. Speedometer and tack issues actually. So, I just realized this is the first time I've shown this on the channel here. So, here's the uh, 87D21, right? A little, a little rusty patina going on. Probably more rust, less patina. One day, we'll get to that. In the meantime, I'm gonna let the bed get eaten up a little bit, so. Just kind of blasphemous, I know, but it's cool. So this guy's an 87, but I do have the dash, I have a 95 in here, so. Ta-da! With the uh, little, you know, windshield blockers there, so. Um, so this guy here is the problem. Uh, went from a cable-driven speedometer to a electrical speedometer. It stopped working one day, so. Well, we'll see how that works. And also the tack is uh, improperly adjusted. So the instrument cluster came out of a V6 Pathfinder, I think. I think it was a Pathfinder. Could have been a hard body. I don't know. Either way, regardless. Um, so it had to be adjusted. There's a little adjustment knob I'll show you guys here in a second to uh, basically make it work for a four-cylinder. So, But uh, I'm pretty sure it's improperly adjusted because it reads a little high. So definitely, definitely turn that knob a little bit too far. So... Uh, but we're gonna pull this guy apart. So, probably need to get some tools first. Might be a good idea. So the cool part about pulling the dash apart of this guy, well, to pull the part of the dash we're gonna get into anyway, I'm gonna use a little screwdriver, a little Phillips head action here. So, so just found another another problem here. Uh, so I got new rims on it off of a GMC Yukon, I believe. Uh, and ever since then, my gas mileage has been garbage. But I just realized the wide band controller I have, the connector for it. I guess my shoe probably caught or something like that. I don't know. Undid it though, so we're fixing that guy right now. I need to actually tuck these wires up appropriately at some point, but uh, probably not today. That's okay though. So, um, kind of here on the dash, I basically pulled the uh, connector back to the ECU for the um, O2 sensor back through the firewall, um, and then this connection goes to the actual um, wideband. So, so just got them stripped, bought some handy dandy auto strippers. So these things are awesome. Got a mad cheap. Um, I think I actually got them on Wish of all places, but uh, you know, wait three weeks and they come in and they've been working pretty awesome. So and they were like five bucks something like that. So works for me. But uh, let's see what this guy crimped up. So uh, a lot of people like to uh, solder, which solder is, is probably the way to go. But I don't know on a thing that kind of moves around a little bit. I like to do butt connectors for sure. So a little guy just put in there, crimp it up, and then uh, then you're good to go. So we're gonna do that real quick here. All you do is uh, slide it on there, like so, and then we'll use the inside of this guy right there uh, to actually crimp the crap out of that guy, and uh, squeeze it and crimp it up. Alright, so we got that side crimped on there, get a little tug, nice and good in there. So we got that on there, and uh, now we'll uh, put the other end, this, this, this side uh, actually plugs into the original O2 sensor, uh, back to the ECU. It's harder than it looks like with uh, one hand. We'll make that do. All right, got the guy crimped up there. A little tug going nowhere. And uh, we'll plug this guy back up in here. Somehow doing it with this with one hand. I think I jinxed myself though. Hey, there we go, it's in there, cool. I'll we'll kind of tug it back here a little bit. I need to do better work on my wiring jobs here. But hey, it works, man. Eh, I might zip tie that out of the way, but anyhow. Back to the actual dash part here, right? Because you need to pull that instrument cluster out. So uh, it's two screws for the first part. So mine ends up being a Phillips head there, and a Phillips head right there, right in there somewhere. I can't even see you my angle here. But uh, we're gonna pop those out. All right, so then uh, once the screws are out, just kind of pull back a little bit and uh, it'll pop off there, right? So I uh, also need to pull a little cap off for the e-brake there. Man, I need to do way better on my wiring. That's garbage. So the other little thing is right here, with it turned off anyway, uh, I've got a voltmeter gauge. So, because there's nothing up on the dash right besides the uh, the warning light for the battery, which by that point it's usually too late. Uh, I had an issue going to work a uh, few years back now uh, with the sock alternator, because it's only 60 amps. Um, I've got, you know, some cheap subwoofer and an amp back here for speakers. Got to have your jams driving to work, you know. But, uh, end up pulling too much I guess and 
uh, truck dad on me on the way to work, so that was fun. Uh, and ever since then, I basically ran one of those voltmeters in there. Um, so, but on the 95 dash, is like this little, I don't know, I guess, I don't even know what you'd put in there, man, it's so small. What if I put my phone in there? Either way. Um, regardless, so I basically cut a hole in the back of it and made that uh, little digital gauge fit in there, so. Um, and have been able to watch my voltage ever since. It's been nice. Also, I highly recommend the uh, Quest alternator upgrade for the hard bodies because that thing's like 120 amps, way better. Have had no issues with that. Besides a squeaky belt, but that's my fault. So, but anyhow. So, guys, kind of pops out. There's a couple of tabs up in there. Right? It kind of pulls out of. Doesn't actually screw in. Though that's a screw for the actual uh, bezel there. But uh, there's a little pop in right there and there. Same thing on the other side. Except I think there's only one over there. Yeah. Um, but I got to be careful because I've got this this uh, gauge in there. So I've got to unplug it from the back, basically. But most people won't have to. So, so that's out. All right, there's all my awesome wiring. Man, I did do a pretty stellar job. And I used the word stellar ironically there because this is not that pretty. But hey, it works, damn it. Oh, that's what I've been hitting on my shoe. So I've got that down there too. So another little uh, fuse panel basically been running. So, all right. <clears throat> So now that that part's out, now we can pull off this bezel. There's a screw here on the right side. Screw here on the left side with my shaky hand. And a couple more screws up in the top of the bezel. And then you got one on the top on the left side. All right, now with those, uh, those four bolts out, the bezel just kind of pops right on out of there. Maybe, there we go. Trying to... Uh, so I don't want to uh, have to re-adhere this microphone there because it actually works there. So I'm going to pull so I'm gonna pull this uh, steering column cover off. All right, so with that out of the way, those are pops. Oh, comes out super easy. Sweet. Four more screws for the actual instrument cluster. Bottom right, bottom left, and then two kind of on the top, sort of in the middle there. Well, there it happens to you. Feel free to do what I did. And uh, basically just pull up Waze, you know. I think Google Maps is getting it too. But uh, Waze will tell you how fast you're going. So if you don't know about Waze, look it up. W-A-Z-E. Awesome GPS stuff. I'm a fan anyway. Oh, lost a screw. So those bolts are out. So uh, we can pull this guy now. Ta-da, maybe. Harder with one hand than it should be. Anyhow, so on the back side there, you've got four plugs. So I'm going to just kind of squeeze on the side of them on both sides, like so. Pops out like that. Make sure you get all those out. And the cluster is now out. So tacks on the right side there. So now it's on the left. So I'll be pulling those screws out here momentarily to pull that out. But I also get to pull off the uh, plastic kind of, I want to call it glass, whatever, plastic cover to it. And then the inner bezel goes as well. And for that, you're going to basically push down these little tabs right there. You can pull the, the clear plastic and the black bezel off of the same piece. All right, so basically got that top one out and then this one out. Once you do that, it'll actually kind of stay open. Let's just kind of work your way around there, kind of pushing them down and out. And that's what the inside of it without the bezel looks like. So you can see a little blue LED there. So kind of like my blues. Now we need to pull off that, uh, that uh, tachometer. Pull that tack, we're going to flip around once again, and those three kind of uh, triangle bolts there, screws really. So once these three guys come out, these are your connections too for it too. So it's kind of nice there's no internal uh, wiring harness or anything like that. It's just these, these screws that make contact with it. So be careful not to lose them, of course. All right, so with that out, I'm going to basically pick up the cluster, and uh, it'll be left behind here. Ta-da! That's what it looks like. Oops, so that's all it is, man. Kind of anticlimactic there. So, big old capacitor and all good stuff. But on the top right, well, if you're looking, I guess it'd be the top left from the front. Either way, little tiny blue guy, that's a potentiometer. So what you want to do is, uh, is turn too far clockwise. I'm going to kick it back a little bit counterclockwise. Maybe hard to see, but 
So see the little arrow point there? I want to say it points to uh, basically that right side of that solder joint there. Um, I want to say that's supposed to be good enough for the uh, the four cylinder. So we'll plug it back in and see what happens. I may end up pulling this guy out next weekend, but hey, it's not too bad to do. Uh, if it's good, I need to probably actually take a an ohm meter to that and figure out what the resistance should be. And uh, I should record that guy for, for the future. So it's a good thing it'd be nice to have. But uh, let's pull this guy back in. So instead of just pulling the cluster off and having it essentially slide out, right, we're going to need to kind of put it back in there. So, um, so I actually just grab by the needle. Probably shouldn't. Um, I've got the clock in this one, so make sure that little panel goes over that, that uh, adjustment there. And then we're back on there. Now we'll flip it back over and uh, screw it back in. So now for the speedometer part. I do have another speedometer, I'm pretty sure. So if it's a speedometer that's bad, then I can you know, swap that guy out. I'm going to test the the, uh, the wires going to the actual speed sensor on the transmission first, though. So whenever I did that, I think I tucked it up back here. That looks like it, actually. And maybe. Ta-da! Cool. Um, so this side goes to the actual, um, rest of the actual main harness and actually goes through one of these, I can't remember. Hi, that one because it got red and white, so pretty sure that goes to the, uh, to the actual speedometer. But we're going to plug this guy, throw a voltmeter in there, or an ohmmeter, and see if we got some kind of continuity there, because we should. And if we don't, then this guy is busted. Quick little shout out to Harbor Freight for having, having awesome deals. Um, got a like compression tester, you might try that on the uh, Miata. It was like, I think 22, something like that after a 20% discount, and then get a free voltmeter too. So uh, I've got, I don't know, four or five of these guys, but for some reason I can never find them when I need them. But hey man, I know where this one is, so we're gonna use that guy. He even came with the batteries, man. How, how cool is that? Oddly enough, I already had one in the truck already. <laughs> cool, either way. So we got our, our uh, digital multimeter set up for, to measure in ohms, and uh, got our plugs plugged in. So now we're gonna test across that those leads and see what we got. So, so I just checked I got nothing. And I'm not sure exactly how that speed sensor works, because I'm not sure if I should have continuity or not. So we're going to test individual wires and go from there. So I need some back probes, safety pins basically. Hey, safety pin and T-pin, got my back probes. to them as back pros because they basically plug into the back of the connection but we don't screw up the front of it so basically just uh needles work quite well because they just kind of slide in between there so not too bad so i'm going to clamp on to the back of that t-pin there maybe there we go so t-pins just pushed in there right um i didn't color code these just they're both yellow because i'm stupid like that but uh so we'll try both of them on the end of the transmission then see what happens let's come underneath here right there's your exhaust right there uh, we got our uh, sway away uh, torsion bars. This little orange wire right there is actually the uh, speedometer cable there, not cable, it's speedometer wire. And then plugs in the transmission right back there. So I'm going to undo that joint and test that guy. Alright, so we got some kind of continuity here. I'm going to blame the jumping around on the T-pins. So that wire should be good. And we'll come down here and we'll swap this guy back over. So all the readings come back like crap. So, a bit of an electrical issue. <clears throat> Have a seat here. Okay. So, the wires are good. It goes down to the actual speed sensor. I'm looking at a, in a Haynes manual now. Uh, but the wires go down to the speed sensor. Um, I don't get anything across the speed sensor. But I'm not sure if I'm supposed to because I'm not really sure exactly how that guy works. Um, like, should it have continuity all the time? I don't know. I might be hosed here, man. I'm not sure how the hell to... Uh, Test this speedometer here. I'm about to set the phone. Time to kill this recording too.